Good morning, Al Edford. This is the pruning for the vineyards at St. Joseph under the auspices of really the Vineyard and Sacramental Wine Ministry. There are different techniques for pruning different varieties of vines. What we'll do here today is what we call a rough pruning for the Rieslings. Pruning techniques for the Rieslings are different from those of the Marquettes, could be different from those of the Gamays of the Chardonnay. What we'll do here is provide an informational video on two pruning techniques, both a cane pruning for winter pruning and a spare and a spar pruning for winter pruning. And again, this is what's called the rough pruning. Later on in the season, maybe May, before what is called butt burst, we will do a final pruning. Now, it is important also to note that this is an informational video. And before any of our volunteers come out into the vineyard, or when they come out into the vineyard, they also have to be supervised and trained before they can start pruning. Now, the reason for pruning is that we want the energy and the nutrients to go into the fruit. Okay. Each vine has a certain, let's say, fruit capacity or a maximum fruit yield. We want to make sure that, in fact, we have the optimum fruit level for the vine and we can supply the optimum nutrients to that fruit level and vegetation. Too much fruit can mean that your fruit is undersized and doesn't get enough sugar content. Too much fruit, too much vegetation. Too little fruit, too little vegetation actually means that in fact your vine is not being fully utilized to its maximum to get its optimum fruit level. So there's a balance between vegetation and the fruit that's produced, that's where pruning comes in. What you want to do is to trim off from the winter growth or last year's growth, the vegetation, okay, that is not necessary, okay, and that draws extra energy that doesn't go through to the optimum fruit level that you want. Now, you think of the vine as a conduit for energy. The energy and nutrients, okay, will come from the root, will go into the, what we call here the trunk, and then from the trunk will go into the cordons, will go into the canes, and then eventually will go into the buds, which in fact produce the shoots and the fruit. Okay. Now, the thing that we want to do before we get into the actual pruning is to let me walk through and identify the parts of a vine that we will be talking about during the pruning process. For instance, this these are called the trunks. They're the old wood that's always retained right above the base. On the trunks you will see these pencil branches if you want to call them. These are called the canes. Cane here, cane here, cane, cane, cane. These canes are probably one or two year 
in growth. When, in fact, a cane becomes more mature and starts, and in fact will start to turn, what we do with the cane is we will take the cane and we will lay it horizontal on this, what we call, wire. Once we take a cane and lay it horizontal on the wire, the cane then is called a cordon. As you can see, this, this was at once a cane. It was laid horizontal, turned into wood, and becomes a cordon. Now, off of the cordon is, in fact, the growth of additional canes. Here, 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 here. On the canes now are what are called nodes. There's a base node here, here's a node, here's a node, node, node. Out of these nodes, 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 come the buds. Off of the buds, later on, in bud burst, come what are called the shoots. Off of the shoots, therefore, you start your foliage and then you start your fruit clusters. Basically, those are the components of the plant. Now, let's talk about pruning itself. We're going to talk about one aspect of pruning first, which is, in fact, the cane pruning. The whole idea is to generate new growth, get rid of the old wood as much as we are allowed to. Now, what we attempt to do here, in, if we can cane prune, we will cane prune. This particular vine is applicable to cane pruning, and there's a reason why, and let me go through it. Below the cordon wire, I have, on this particular trunk here, two good canes, this cane and this cane. Actually, I've got three good canes and four good canes, this one and also this one below the training wire. So. This cane, this trunk, has got one-year-old canes, new growth, that I can use and, in fact, later on in the season, bend over and cordon and generate new, what we would call, new spurs that will generate new growth. So, what I can do on this particular, what I can do on this particular cane and this particular cordon, where one, two, three, actually four new canes have developed, I can take the rest of this old wood on this cordon and I could trim it off. I don't need it and I can trim it right above the last cane that I'm going to pick. And this can be taken away. Now, I can use the same approach on this cordon because I have one new growth here, a cane. I've got a cane here. And again, below the wire, okay, so I can look at this cordon and say, I don't need all of this old wood. And therefore, somewhere above the last cane that you pick, you can trim off the rest of that cordon. And we'll... Take it out of the way for now. Right. now. Again, 
when we're finally done, I only need one cane to cordon, but I will take two or three right now for insurance, because when I come back to do a final pruning, maybe we would have had a frost, and maybe it would have killed this cordon, or maybe, in fact, there are uh, buds on this cordon when I finally get to it that they may be dead. So I have a backup plan of using any one of these cordons, okay, any one of these canes as my new cordon. The same philosophy goes for this side. On this particular wood, I've got two canes here and here. I can use any one of these canes to be my cordon, but I won't make that decision until my final pruning. What your rough pruning does for you is to get rid of everything you know you're not going to use, and in fact your rough pruning gives you the advantage of doing of more time pruning now so that, in fact, when you final prune, your labor in pruning is sufficiently reduced and you can final prune closer to bud burst because you'll final prune faster with less labor. Okay. All right. In final prune, in this particular cane pruning, what you will want to do is you'll retain these and you'll retain them and you will not cut them off here. Don't cut the tips, just let them as is. So this is a final rough cane prune, dormant pruned vine. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate what would be called spur pruning. Prior to this, we went into what was called dormant cane pruning. This will be dormant spur pruning. Now, and the reason for that is, if you remember, on the trunk we had canes coming up below what we call the cordon line. In some cases you will not have any canes below the cordon line so therefore, obviously, you can't bend them to bring onto the cordon line. So, what do we do? Well, here's what we do. We will use the existing old wood cordons that are there. And on the canes, the one-year cane growth that comes out of the cordons, we will, in fact, prune these so that our new growth will come off of these canes that, in fact, are on the cordon. Now, again, but we're still talking a rough pruning at this point. If you recall, there were, in fact, nodes on the canes, a node, a node at the base, another node here, and a couple nodes up here, which is where the buds and the new growth is going to come from. So what we will do on spur pruning is, at this particular point in time, we will trim and cut off excess cane that we do not and will not need in this case. And what we'll do here is take a cane that's coming off of the cordon and we'll go up maybe, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven or eight buds or maybe six inches and we'll cut about here. Because now we've cut away any area that energy and nutrients will go up, but they're not needed. So the energy and the nutrients will concentrate itself in here and into these buds. Now, 
So what I'll do is, all right, here's a cane, and I'll probably keep perhaps maybe eight canes on a cordon when I attempt to spur prune. So I've got one, uh, I could still keep this one for now if I wanted to, or in fact, what I could do also is take that one completely off. My idea here is between the abbreviated upper canes that you have now, your node spacing should be maybe roughly six inches or maybe a, a palm spacing about from here to here. Now sometimes you will use judgment on this also because you can say, well, it's still the same issue. Well, I've got two here. Which two should I cut back? Which should I keep? Sometimes you might want to say, well, maybe I'll make that decision, okay, at final pruning. For now, just for insurance, let me keep this one also. And I've got a base bud. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe I'll cut this one here. Now, when I come back in final pruning, I may just cut this off if I don't have this one. But here's the other issue that I've got. I've got a spacing between here and this other cane, okay, which is fairly uh, standard. Now I can use this or I can use this, but I'm going to keep this one as insurance. Okay, now as I go along, well here comes another cane, okay, I'm going to keep this for now, All right, and maybe I'll cut it there. Here's one here, I got this here, there's a good space, I'll cut this one here, get that out of the way. This, I got a space here, about six inches. I'll keep that there. Then you keep going along. Here comes another one. All right, I'll keep that one there. So, uh, let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Just out of there. Okay, I got a whole bunch of them. Now, what I'll do here, see this one? This one's got some blackness on it. This is what's called powdery mildew. So what you want to do is, this isn't really that healthy of a cane. So you really want to look for the ones with powdery mildew and you want to get rid of them. Because that powdery mildew will only come back this season. Get that one out of there. Clean this up. All right, now. All right, again, well, I can keep both of these just for now. This one I'm going to take off. It's got some powdery mildew on. I've already got two here, and I'll take that one off. Now you see what happens here? As you go along, it's not a standard uh, procedure. You have to make judgments as to what you want to keep and what you want to throw away. So each plant is different, and each plant takes a little bit of thought but the principle is here in the videos. All right, so now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is, is sufficient. So I could actually take this off. I could retain, okay. Right. Now, what I could do here is, this is all excess here. Here actually is to remove that because all that is going to do is suck up more energy that I don't really need at this point. So I'll cut that out. So this is what actually it's called spur pruning, but it won't. This is still a upper cane and it won't really be a spur until I come in with my final pruning and what we do with the final one is, for instance, we will cut this back further so that what happens on final pruning, we will retain only maybe three nodes. We will retain a base node, which is here, 
a, a, a node coming off the base, which may be here, here, and we may cut this at final pruning, we may cut that right there. So when I cut it right there, then this becomes a spur, and that's when it's called spur pruning. But I won't cut these to spur level until final prune. Why? Again, because if in fact this bud dies, or this bud dies, but I have a good bud up here, or all of these buds die, but I have a good bud up here, well, I'm not going to cut it back down here, so I'll have to adjust my height, and I'll have to cut it up here. And the rationale for that is because the energy going into the cane will usually go to the highest bud. So even though you got dead buds here, if you got one higher here, you can still get the energy to that and cut it off there, and it still becomes good spur. It's just a smaller spur because you're your good buds up above so it's a judgment call but see that is in fact what is called spur pruning and in this case it's called the winter dormant rough spur pruning now I would use the same logic on this side as I just did on that side that's it